Well, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing today? All right, so we are going to continue the fire, the fodder, not the fodder, five star. I know we got that really big update and what's to come next and everything. And uh, anybody that's been following my channel, I, I saw it. Everything looks really cool. I'm going to talk about it in another video. Uh, also, I'm not going to go like really far into it. We don't know too much about it. Not only that, but... It's really not worth talking about it until we get everything, until it comes out, you know. I don't want to jump the gun and think this and then that happens and whatever. So, anyways, that's besides the point. We're going to start, we're going to we're gonna continue this, we're going to make this video. So we got Vanessa. Alright. Vanessa's a really great monster. She's on my wish list. I really, really, really would like to have Vanessa. Uh, she gets increased resistance by 25%. She has leader ability. I think this leader ability is probably one of the best leader abilities in the arena, uh, if not the best leader ability. She has a revive. Her revive isn't that great, but it's just added utility. She has a weakened defense over here, and whatever, she has this attack. And this attack procs this attack if she kills something. So, anyway, that's besides the point. How would I build Vanessa? Honestly, all right, and here, here's the deal. If you pull Vanessa and you're like level 20 and You don't have the right runes for her. She's not that great for you. Yeah, she'd probably be a decent fodder farmer in the beginning. But other than that, whatever. If you pull her in the beginning and you need her as a fodder farmer, build a fatal blade, attack, 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 and use her as a fodder farmer if you want. And if you six-star her, whatever the case is. As you're progressing in the game, maybe you want to do swift runes. You do swift endure. I'm going to tell you guys why in a second. And as you progress further in the game, you want to do Violent Endure. All right. Now, why do I want Endure? The most annoying Vanessas I've fought in the arena had 100% resistance. And it just drives me crazy. They build her super tanky with 100% resistance. And she just... She has her revive. And I think her revive... Her revive's on a six-turn cooldown when it's maxed out. And the fact that she gives this leader ability is just so crazy. I would build her hit point, hit point, hit point, Violent Endure... Try and max out her resistance, get some accuracy, and get some speed substats on her. If you want to build her speed hit point, hit point, and you can get her hit points up pretty decent, you can do that as well. I say accuracy substats so that she can apply this weakened defense as well. She's a utility monster, really good utility monster. It's very hard to build her, though. You need really good runes for her, especially if you're going to go violent, violent endure on her. You can also go violent focus if you can get 100% resistance with focus runes on her. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, I wouldn't do revenge. I fought a revenge one. It's stupid. She doesn't do very high attack. It's not. And then violent will. You really don't need her to take the first turn. So will is whatever. You could. You might be able to get away with nemesis because people are gonna pro try, probably trying to kill her either first or second so that she doesn't revive. So you can probably get away with nemesis too if you can get. Her resistance high enough and her accuracy at a decent accuracy. We're not still talking about 100% accuracy. And also, remember, when you're doing Nemesis runes, you can't build them all that tanky. Because if she's getting attacked and they're not increasing her attack bar, it's not worth it. So, anyway. So, Violent Endure is what I would do as a late game build. Uh, Zyros. Zyros... There's so many different ways to build Zyros. You ask somebody, if you ask five Zyros users how you would build Zyros, they're going to give you five different answers. Okay? Zyros is one of those monsters, if you pulled more than one of them, you're going to end up building all of them, and they're going to all have different builds on them, because you, could build, you can use them in so many different ways. He has... Uh, he gets increased crit rate by 15% when awakened. He has his leader ability right here. This is what Zyros is all about. It's all about this AoE right here. It resets everybody's cooldowns. Then he has this AoE over here. Uh, with a 25% chance to put uh, dots. I think it hits four times. Uh, and all right, The cooldowns aren't that bad. I think it's on a two-turn cooldown. Either, one, either two or three. And this is on a four-turn cooldown, I believe. And it shoots an arrow, whatever. It's that His first skill doesn't really matter. Um... 
How would how can you build Zyros? You could build Zyros Fatal Blade, Fatal Focus, Rage Blade, Rage Focus, Despair Blade, Despair Focus, uh, Violent Blade, Violent Focus. Hey, there's so many different ways people build him. The, he's another one. He needs good runes. If you don't have the good runes and you want to use him as an attacker, his his AOE does a lot of damage. Just do that. But the thing is, you need some accuracy for him. Resistance, you don't need. Oh, and you can also... Another good build, if you're going to put him on defense, even for offense, is will ruin. So you do like violent will or despair will. Whatever the case is, it's like, it's so crazy with Zyros. You can build him so many different ways. Me, personally, if I got Zyros, I'd probably remove my Tyron's runes and try and find a will set for him and, put, and make him despair will. And... Try and, now, you can build an attack Zyros, you can build a tanky Zyros. He has a really high base attack, and it's not hard to get his crit rate high enough. But some people use him as utility, and they build him tanky as well. So they go like speed, hit point, hit point. Some people go, um, some people go attack, crit damage, hit point. Some people go attack, crit damage, attack. A lot of people go crit, attack, crit damage, attack, actually. Um, and a lot of people do violent, violent will sets. That's like the end game build for a lot of people. Despair Will, in my opinion, is still alright as well because he can stun with it's he has two AoEs, he could stun with both of them. Um I know some people that have Rage Blade Zyroses. I know some people that have Fatal Fo Fatal Blade Zyroses or Fatal Focus. Uh, some people build him speed crit damage accuracy, some people build him speed hit point accuracy, some people build him there's so many different ways. It depends on how you want to use him and how you need him. You know, me personally, I would probably I would take the Tyron ruins off him because they're well balanced ruins, and he's got ac it, they have accuracy on them. He's tanky. They'll make him kind of tanky, and it's got a good speed. And I would build a speed, a speed attack Zyros. Me personally, that's what I would do. What you want to do is up to you. Um, Perna. All right. There's different ways to build Perna as well. Now, for the offset, the main set, violent all the way. If you don't have violent runes, you could go swift. But the main set is violent all the way. Perna has, Perna gets 15 speed when awakened. She has this cooldown, recovers the hit points of all allies by 10% of every turn. And then when she dies, she comes back with 100% hit points. Now, not it's not only that, they don't put this in there. It, let's say you kill Perna, and Perna has a 90% uh, attack bar. She also revives with her attack bar at 90%. So, remember this when you're about to kill a Perna. If you have debuffs on Perna, like if it's stunned, or if it has attack down, or glancing hit, stuff like that, and you don't want Perna to take an attack, maybe you skip attacking Perna, because, especially if the attack bar is really high, and Perna is the next one to go, because... Maybe you want them to take the attack with glancing hit or with the attack down debuff on her, on her so that she doesn't kill something, you know? Because if you let Perna go sometimes with no debuffs, it'll get crazy. So there's also different ways people build Perna as well. A lot of I, the probably some of the best Pernas I've seen are Violent Will or Violent Blade, even Violent Revenge works. I would personally go Violent Endure so that people don't try and reset Perna's, uh, Perna's passive, okay? With attack, crit damage, attack, and hit point substats around and crit rate substats. Another monster that's hard to build to get it perfect. But great monster. It's not as great as it was before, but still, Perna is still a great monster. Violent Will is another way to go so that Perna doesn't get resist Perna doesn't get reset on the first hit if you can't get the resistance high enough. If you're gonna build if you're gonna try and build a little bit of a resistant Perna, which the resistance Pernas are the ones that have really messed me up. Not the will ones, it's the resistance Pernas that have messed me up pretty badly. Um You gotta try and get the resistance at around fifty to sixty percent. You're not looking for hundred percent resistance. You want Perna to be able to attack. Perna's already pretty tanky, has a nice tanky uh, base hit points. The attack is good, 878. Also, this this is good for dungeons as well for Perna. Perna's good, really, really good for dungeons. Dragons, B10, stuff like that. 
because it, it deals damage based on the enemy's hit points. She has a stun over here. And then just reviving, coming back, is just so crazy. So that's the way I would build Perna. Violent is probably the, the best way to go in Perna. All right, so you got Rakan now. Rakan, it's not that great for Arena, but for Guild Wars, he's actually really, really good. I have him. I like him. I would go Violent all the way. Why? Because this has a chance of resetting the Violent proc. Because as you know, it gradually goes down the chances of getting a Violent proc. So, Violent Blade, try and get his crit rate high enough. You need his crit rate high enough. And you would go hit point, crit damage, hit point. That's just the way I would build. Some people build a, like a hybrid recon. They go hit point, crit damage, attack. And they say that this helps the attack, the, the collapse go. It does help collapse go. I'm not saying it doesn't. But I would build Rakan, hit point, crit damage, hit point, Violent Blade. I think, uh, I think, uh, what do you call it? Um, Revenge is a little bit of a waste on, on him because it's just a one turn continuous damage. It's not a big deal. I, trying to get the crit rate as high as possible, really over 60% is what you need. I had mine at 62% and it wasn't critting that much. I have mine at 72% now and he still misses crits. So, even with, uh, we failed the Guild War, by the way, guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, even with a uh, 72% crit rate and Theo Mars as the leader, sometimes he misses a crit, so I'm telling you, get the crit rate up as high as possible. <clears throat> so, we got Juno here. Everybody thinks that Juno sucks. Juno's actually... I, in my opinion, I, Juno's pretty good. I've seen her in G3 Arena quite a bit. People need You need a buff stripper. Juno, Juno's the one to do the job. So she gets increased accuracy by 25%. She has this uh, passive. If you put two or more debuffs on her, she removes the debuffs. And for each debuff she removes, she gets 15% hit points. And, and then recovers all allies by 10% of uh, each, each harmful effect removed. So it's hard to fight Juno sometimes. You have to be careful when you're fighting Juno. If you have a lot of multiple debuffs on you. Another reason why I think Juno's good is because people are going to sit there and try and Lucian you. And Juno's fire and Lucian, there's a less chance that Lucian will crit against Juno. And she has this crit rate leader ability. So it's good. It's, it's not bad at all. She removes all buffs and turns them into, uh, into, into dots for two turns. And it has a 90% chance. And it's in a two-turn cooldown when it's maxed out. And then this attack, she increases her own uh, attack bar. My opinion with Juno, Despair Revenge, <coughs> all the way. There's nothing else that you could possibly build for Juno. It's Despair Revenge. You go speed hit point, hit point, or you go... <clears throat> I don't suggest, I see them. I see people build her speed, crit rate, accuracy. She's too squishy afterwards, and it's easy to kill her. She gets one-shotted by things. So I would do speed, hit point, hit point, and look for everything you need in substats. Crit rate and accuracy. You don't need any resistance for her. Don't even bother to put resistance on her. If Just for the chances for them to land more than one weakening effect. Because it gets really annoying when she when she removes buffs and does things. She ends up saving. She, you'd be surprised. She ends up doing a lot of... Uh, she gets really, really, really annoying. So we got Rika here. People say Rika sucks. I personally like Rika in certain ways. I like all five stars. There's no five star that's bad. They just have different uses. <coughs> So increases accuracy by 25% when she's awakened. She has this leader ability, increases crit rate by 38% for all fire monsters. Then she has this, it reduces uh, attack speed and always lands a critical hit on uh, against enemies that have less than 30% hit points. Fine. Then this is a stun and this is uh, this she can sleep with like a, I don't know what the percent chance is for her to sleep afterwards uh, when, when the skill is maxed out. So how would I build it? There's a couple of ways to build it. You could, uh, the, the good build that I believe is Despair Focus. Despair Blade as well. You can do Attack, Crit, Damage, Attack. You can also build her a little hybrid. Make, do Speed, Crit, Damage, Attack. She's really good for TOA Hard, actually. And Trial of Ascension in general. So if you need her to be a little tanky, you could build her Speed, Crit, Damage, Hit Point. Because she has the two AoEs. You can go Violent Revenge or even Despair Revenge with her. Despair Revenge wouldn't be bad with her. The thing is, she has the two AoEs and maybe you want to stun with this AoE. 
and then this one it's a 50% chance I don't know what the chances are of it of it procking uh, when it's maxed out but the spare ruins can't be resisted so if you have a stun that procs and it can't be resisted I would definitely go despair despair revenge definitely uh, Laika Laika before Theomars was a boss he's still a boss I, let me tell you something he, he still hits really hard gets increased resistance by 25% fine he has his leader ability 50% uh, defense <coughs> he doesn't do any glancing hits and then he has a 30% chance to stun an attacker if they attack him this is a little bit of a waste because he's kind of He's not squishy in terms of base hit points, but the way people build him, attack, crit, damage, attack, he's kind of squishy. Now, you could build him Fatal, you could build him Rage if you don't have the right Violent Ruins. I would definitely do Violent Ruins. Why? Because this is on a two-turn cooldown, and if he decides to Violent proc a few times, and he gets this off twice, he's killing something. No matter what, he's, no matter what happens, he's killing something. Alright, so... I would do attack, crit, damage, attack. I wouldn't put him on defense. He used to be better on defense before, but Theomars just wrecks him now. So I wouldn't put him on defense. But the way I would build him, you could do Violent Blade or Violent Revenge. Revenge, especially since he hits hard, he's going to end up doing good damage. Sophie, what's the problem? Hey, anyway, Mei Hu Wang. Let me tell you something. A lot of people, they underestimate this guy. He's really, really good. Really, really, really good. Alright. First of all, you can't you can't CC him as in you can't sleep him, you can't stun him, you can't freeze him, you can't do anything. And then he has he has this ability for every time he gets attacked, his his attack power increases by twenty percent and it goes up ten times, so he gets two hundred percent attack power. He gets increased speed, he has a, a defense leader ability, he has a weakened defense and then a vampire ability within this, so he gets hit points. And the harder he hits, the more hit points he gets. And then he has a built-in stun, which I believe the stun is 50% when it's maxed out. I don't remember. And this weakened defense goes up to 100% when it's maxed out. So, how would you build him? Violent Revenge is the way to go. I've seen a Beast one, Despair, uh, Despair Focus, I think, or Despair Revenge. I don't remember if it was. And that's uh, Trollings. But Trolling only did that because he... Uh, he he the the despair runes that he had were really 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 good. Really, the the actual build for him is violent revenge. You want him to revenge for to stun. You want him to get as many turns as possible, and you want him to hit as hard as possible too. Sometimes he'll solo. He, for guild wars, he's good. Sometimes he'll solo monsters and like take as many turns as possible by himself. He'll be the last one up, and he'll just go completely wild and he heals himself too with this so it gets it gets really crazy with him uh another build you could probably do swift with him if you don't have the violent runes you could go swift revenge or swift uh swift blade attack crit damage attack crit damage uh, i'm sorry you could go hit point crit damage hit point or you could go attack crit damage hit point I personally don't know what I would do with him if I got him. I'd probably do hit point, crit damage, hit point, and look for attack subs. Or go uh, hit point, crit damage, hit point. And, uh, I'm sorry, uh, attack, crit damage, hit point, and look for <coughs> different subs to try and get him. But try and get his, his crit rate as high as possible if you put crit damage in, in slot 4. So we got Velojul. Now I'm going to make a video about what I'm talking about afterwards. But... Velajul, there's so many different ways to build him. It's so crazy. You can use him as a supporter. You can use him as an attacker. You can use him in many, many different ways. This second skill hits really hard. I've seen it upwards of around 38,000. Then this skill is so convenient. You know, it, when it's maxed out, I believe it's on a three or four turn cooldown. And you just have constant immunity. It's so crazy. And then he has buff removal over here. And he gets, he, he gets increased critical rate. Okay, that's good. So... This contradicts with this. You know, he gets increased critical rate, but he's a support monster. How would you build him? I'm going to tell you what a lot of people build him. A lot of people build him violent will, uh, speed defense, 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 crit damage, defense. Like, so many different builds with him. A build I want to try with him is I'm thinking about doing swift 
uh, and this is just something I want to try out. It's not, it may not be correct. But as you know, I have a pretty fast Bernard, and my Bernard is plus 159 speed. Now, he's not going to get the whole one plus 159, but he'll, he'll get over plus one, uh, over 150. And my Bernard's build is speed, crit damage, defense. So I would love to try that out with him just to see what he does on defense. And it's swift. He, my Bernard has swift and a broken set on him. So that's not the actual build for him. Violent is really like the way to go. But you can surprise your, uh, your opponent if you have him on defense and you put him on swift runes and you make him really fast. But Violent is really the way to go. When he takes a lot of turns, it just gets crazy with him. Because he does a lot of damage as well. We got Kumar here. Kumar, he's another one that's hard to build. Okay, uh, A lot of builds I see with him is Violent Revenge or Violent Will. I've seen Will. It's not common, but I've seen. I've also seen Nemesis as well. Um, people build him differently. Hit point, hit point, hit point, hit point, crit damage, hit point. Don't put speed in slot two. He buffs his own speed. Try and get some decent speed from substats. But you, what's really important, especially if you put crit damage in slot four, even without crit damage, the fact of the matter is, uh, he gets all right, he buffs himself. He he gets a buff on his on this. This does continuous damage, but if he gets a crit, he increases his attack speed. This is why crit rate is very important for him. And then it'll be important for him crit damage to put so he can get his AOE unrecoverable off. And this is just a heal, and it, it works on terms. So if he has below 50%, he's going to heal himself. If he has above 50% and you need to heal an, an ally, he'll heal the ally. And it's a nice heal too. So really... Like Kumar and them, if for an early game build, just go all energy, hit point, hit point, hit point, and he'll be fine. But <clears throat> a late game build, or even a mid game build, you could go swift, uh, swift will, swift revenge, and hit point, hit point, hit point. By then, you're not really having the right runes. But the way to go with him is violent revenge. Rocky. Now, Rocky, I want this skill to hit as hard as possible. I would definitely go rage plate. Not even Rage Revenge. Rage Blade all the way. Rage Will would work too. Just in case you think there's a lot of CC monsters on defense and you, you don't want her to get CC. She gets increased critical rate, which is OP. So that's why Rage all the way. You go Fatal. If you don't have the right substats to go, ra to go Rage, go Fatal. She has an AoE weak in defense. This skill right here, if she kills something with this skill, they can't be revived. And then this skill, whatever, it just puts uh, continuous damage. But... All around, she's a good monster. I would make her hit as hard as possible with this skill right here. Rage Blade. Straight through. All the way. Uh, Chi Wu. Chi Wu can be built a couple of ways. My suggestion is the spare will. Um, he can also be built violent. I don't like him violent. This does damage. So when you do the spare and you're removing beneficial effects, he also has a chance to stun. What's really good about Chiwu is that he's a buff remover and he has a, a speed leader ability. So he kills two birds with one stone. And he gets increased accuracy too by 25%. And this attack always lands a, a crushing hit. And then he, he prevents uh, certain enemies from receiving beneficial effects as well. And he can remove buffs. So he can remove up to two buffs. So it's really good. And then he can sleep as well. If you don't have the despair runes, you can go swift. But... And the build with him is speed, hit point, hit point. I don't really, I really wouldn't suggest accuracy in slot 6. Accuracy can be a little bit of an overkill since he gets 25% accuracy. But, despair will all the way, in my opinion, with him. Speed, hit point, hit point. Try and get him as fast as possible. Get some high accuracy and some high hit points and he'll be fine. It, we've got Brendia. Now, Brendia does an insane amount of damage. It's like pointless with her, the amount of damage that he does, that she does. I've seen screenshots of her doing like 110,000 damage. It's just ridiculous. It's just so crazy. She gets increased attack speed she uh, by 15, and then she also increases hit points for monsters in the arena by 44%. This skill right here, this is the one I'm talking about, 110,000 damage. It's ridiculous. It's not even needed. Um... And then she has the shield over here, proportionate to your max level, whatever, and for two turns. 
And weakens the attack power of all enemies for two turns with an 80% chance. Oh, that's not so bad. That's pretty cool. I didn't. I've, I, I, I forgot about that. And then she has this increase. Uh, puts weakened defense for two turns. You can make Brandia. You can put Brandia in uh, your Dragon's team. Definitely. Another thing about Brandia. There's different ways to build her. You can build her violent. You can build her swift. You can build her fatal. You can build her rage. Now, Fatal and Rage, I think, is an overkill because it's pretty much Fatal and Rage. On Fatal and Rage, I believe, she does the 110,000 damage. There's no monsters with more than like 40, 45k damage anyway, so you really don't need to go Fatal or Rage. I would go Violent, like Violent Revenge or Violent Will. And just to max, maximize this, to keep going. This too, since it's probably on a three or four turn cooldown, just keep uh, just to keep going. So, uh, and people build her hybrid. Some people build her speed crit damage attack. Some people build her hit point crit damage attack. Depends on how you want to build her. Neither of them is wrong. As I said, put doing a crit attack crit damage attack on her is just too much of an overkill, in my opinion. There's no monsters with more than forty five k damage. So if you lose a little bit of attack, and the reason being is she gets thirty percent more damage per weakening effect on the monsters, so that's just the way, that's just, it's too much of an overkill with her. So then we got Tessarion, everybody can summon Tessarion if you're lucky enough, increases accuracy by 25%, increases resistance by 41%, then we have this passive, this is what's so great about it, Tessarion, increases the damage inflicted on en enemies with harmful effects by 20%, and makes an enemy... Boss is excluded, obviously. Oblivious for two turns with each attack. Passive skills aren't activated in an oblivion state. So pretty much he shuts down passives. Uh, he has a weakened defense over here. And then he has an attack based on speed. Get away from me. No, go. Get, get out of here. Go. Go. My dogs are so spoiled, man. They want me to sit down on the couch with them and so they can lay down on top of me the entire time. Uh, okay. Okay. Unbelievable. So, people do build Tessarion differently. They do attack, crit damage, attack. Uh, I'm sorry, attack, yeah, attack, crit damage, attack. They do speed, crit damage, attack. They do um, speed, hit point, hit point. Now, for me personally, for an endgame build, I would do speed, hit point, hit point. Why? Because I need him to tank Perna and Camilla's. All right? And him being an attack build isn't going to help me. I would build him speed, hit point, hit point, and bring an attacker with him so that you could shut down Camila's as a passive and Perna's passive and any other monsters that, are, that have passives that you need to shut down for almost as well and be able to survive these attacks as well. You know, So he's not that bad either. He puts dots with its first skill. He has a weakened defense. He can be used. I would use him as a utility or a hit point monster, what he's meant to be, even though he does more damage. He does decent damage in speed, hit point, hit point build anyway. For the more debuffs you put on, the more uh, the, the more damage he does. Uh, violent Revenge is the build for him, by the way. Uh, if you don't have Violent Rune, Swift, Swift Revenge is the best, Swift, uh, Swift Focus as well. You gotta look for accuracy substats, though. This guy's pretty cool. I fought him a few times in the arena. He messed me up pretty badly. Uh, increases ability, increases critical rate by 15%. Okay. Attacks the enemy several times. Learning each strike has a 25% chance to stun the enemy for one turn. This hits a lot of times. So there's like so many chances for him to stun. Then this, this is pretty cool. Attacks an enemy target two times, removing its beneficial effects and turning the skill on cool time. Meaning she, he he's, he uh, he resets the skill, and then this he transfers weakening effects. I would probably build him Rage Blade, even though his attack isn't that high. Rage Blade or Fatal Blade, even though his attack isn't that high, he's still an attack monster, and he hits pretty hard. And then if he starts to go wild, he goes wild. So he can also be used as a little bit. If you you could build him speed crit damage attack. Or attack crit damage attack. If you build him a speed crit damage attack, he can also be something like a Tiana counter. Because right now, Tiana, the Wind Polar Queen, is what's going crazy all throughout the G3 
and G2 uh, Arena right now, and Game Arena. So if he ends up attacking her, since he's removing beneficial effects and putting them on cooldown, she's gonna end, he's gonna end up shutting down Tiana. Mm. Sophie, please, what's your problem? What's your problem today? Why? I don't want to lay down with you on the couch. I'm sorry. And then we've got Sekhmet. She's another one that's a Tiana counter. We'll talk about that in a second. Increases accuracy by 25%. And then increases hit points by 33% in the... In the this is a, an all-around leader ability. Uh, attacks an enemy still in all beneficial effects. And sets the enemy skills on max cooldown. What is your problem? So she has a skill that's similar to Okeanos. And this can be used as a... As a... What do you call it? As a Tiana counter as well. She's better to put speed, hit point, hit point on. She gets... Ugh, why do I do that? She gets accuracy anyway. So you look for accuracy and substats. She also has this skill right here. This skill right here can get a little crazy. Uh, she hits up to 12 times in the arena and then I think 9 times in, the, in Guild Wars. She has a chance to put weakened defense, glancing hit, and uh, unrecoverable on you. So it just gets really insane it can get really crazy with her if she just puts all of these weakening effects she's definitely putting two or three on you so uh speed hit point hit point is my opinion you go violent you go uh, i'm sorry her honestly since i she looks like a good tiana counter i would go swift on her swift uh fl blade swift will works as well and try and get her to outspeed Tiana's. That's that's pretty much what you're trying to do because everybody has Tiana at like almost 200 or above 200 speed. So you want her to outspeed them. And that is it for fodder or not to fodder fire monsters. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to everybody later.